the 26th lecture and we are continuing our discussion on two port network parameters. Today's topic would be interrelationships and applications of two port parameters. Before we take the interrelationships, we would like to work out a couple of examples on ABCD parameters and one of them is the ideal transformer. As I have already discussed, an ideal transformer has primary as well as secondary inductances going to infinity. The mutual inductance also goes to infinity, but the ratio of the two inductances is finite and this ratio in terms of turns ratio is equal to what? L1 by L2. Do you know the relation between inductance and number of turns? Inductance is proportional to square. So, this is equal to n square, square of the number of turns. Okay. That is why the ratio is finite because the ratio of the number of turns is finite. And in addition, we indicate the dots and we write the word ideal here. Okay. In addition to inductances being infinite, the coefficient of coupling has to be 1 exactly 1. If the inductances are finite and the coefficient of coupling is 1, we call it a perfect transformer. A perfect transformer becomes ideal if L1, L2 and M all go to infinity in such a manner that the ratio of L1 to L2 is finite. Okay. Now, as I have already pointed out, an ideal transformer does not have impedance or admittance matrices. Impedance and admittance matrices cannot be defined for an ideal transformer because Z11 is infinity, so is Y11, okay. Y22, of course Z22 also, yes correct. And therefore, Z and Y parameters are not defined. <coughs> are not defined. Now, if I take the voltage current relationships, you will see that both H parameters and ABCT parameters can be defined. The voltage current relationships are that V1 is equal to N times V2 and I1 is equal to minus 1 over N I2. This is the relationship. Now, <coughs> let me write it down again. V1 equals to N V2 and I1 is equal to minus 1 over N I2 from which the ABCD parameters are obvious. You see for ABCD, V1 is to be identified with A V2 minus B I2 and I1 is to be identified with C V2 minus D I2. Agreed? This is the definition of ABCD parameters and therefore, for the ideal transformer, the ABCD matrix is simply, if you compare this with this, you see <coughs> that A is simply equal to N, B is 0, C is 0 and D is 1 over N. And you also notice that AB minus CD is equal to 1. This has to be obeyed because the ideal transformer is a reciprocal device. All right. If I want the H parameters, okay, the definition of H parameters are that V1 is H11 I1 plus H12 I2 V2, agreed? H12 V2 and I2, the other current, is equal to H21 I1 plus H22 V2. So, can you tell me what is the H matrix now. H matrix, if you compare this relationship with this, you see V1, H11 would be 0, H11 is 0, H12 would be equal to N, agree? H21 minus N and H22 would be 0. And you notice that H12 is indeed equal to minus H21, which is the condition for reciprocity. 
So, if you write the voltage current relationships at the ports, if you are able to do that, the parameters should be obvious. And for an ideal transformer, the only way to describe it is either an H matrix or an ABCD matrix, transmission matrix. The Z and Y parameters do not exist. Now, take an ideal transformer <coughs> and understand why it is called a transformer. If I have an impedance ZL here, the voltages are V1, I1, V2, I2. If it is terminated in ZL and the ratio is NS to 1, these are the dots, then V1 is equal to N V2, I1 is equal to minus 1 over N I2 and therefore, the input impedance V1 by I1 is simply equal to minus N squared V2 by I2. Now, if I transfer this minus sign here, then obviously, V2 by minus I2 is equal to ZL and therefore, the input impedance Z in is equal to N squared ZL <coughs> and this is why it is called a transformer. Not only it transforms voltages and currents, V2 is 1 by N times V1, current I2 is equal to minus n times I 1. It transforms voltages and currents. It also transforms impedance. A secondary impedance Z L is transformed into n squared times Z L when referred to the primary. For example, if this is an inductance, then if it is inductance L, then the effective inductance looking at the primary shall be n squared times L. If this is a capacitance C, then the effective capacitance looked at from the primary would be C divided by n squared. If it is a resistance R, then it would be n squared times R. This is the property of a transformer. <coughs> the other example that I take for ABCD parameters is, I do not know if I have done this, the pi network. Have I done this? ABCD parameters or did I derive the H parameters? H we derive. Let us derive the ABCD parameters. <coughs> V1 I1, V2 I2. We wish to derive the ABCD parameters. Our relationships is V1 equal to AV2 minus BI2 and I1 is equal to CV2 minus DI2. All right. A is equal to V1 by V2 under the condition I2 equals to 0 and therefore, what I do is I keep this open, connect a source here, connect a source here. This is a constraint because I2 equal to 0, I cannot connect a source here. All right, This I have explained already. So, what you have to find out is V2 by V1 and then find the reciprocal of this. So, under this condition V2 by V1, V2 by V1 would be a potential division Y A is ineffective, potential division between Y C and Y B and you can easily show that this is Y C divided by Y C plus Y B. Okay. In terms of impedances it is Z B divided by Z B plus Z C. In terms of admittances it is Y C divided by Y C plus Y B and therefore, A is equal to Y C plus Y B divided by Y C. Is that okay? This is the value of A. <coughs> to find the parameter B, well I can find another parameter from the same network. You notice that C is equal to I 1 divided by V 2 with I 2 equal to 0. <coughs> so, I can find out C by connecting a current source I 1 to the network Y A Y C Y B and then finding out the voltage here with I 2 equal to 0 this is open circuited. Now, <coughs> this can be very simply solved this current 
this current is equal to I 1 multiplied by 1 by Y A divided by 1 by Y A plus 1 by Y B plus 1 by Y C. Is that okay? This is this current, current division between Y A and Y B in series with Y C and the voltage V 2 <coughs> the voltage V 2 then shall be equal to this current multiplied by 1 over Y B and therefore, V 2 by I 1 is equal to V 2 by I 1 is equal to Y C divided by Y A Y B plus Y B Y C plus Y C Y A. Is that okay? Are the steps all right? I have done it by inspection and therefore, C which is the reciprocal of this C would be equal to Y A Y B plus Y B Y C plus Y C Y A divided by Y sub C. This is the C parameter. To find the B and D parameters, B and D parameters we have to make V 2 equal to 0. <coughs> if you recall B is equal to v 1 by minus i 2 with v 2 equal to 0 and d is equal to i 1 by minus i 2 with v 2 equal to 0. This is the definition <coughs> and therefore, I make v 2 equal to 0 which means that y b goes out of the picture. So, we have a y a I do not care what the source is, obviously we require two sources, we require a voltage source and a current source or a current source. I do not care what the source is, all I know is this voltage is V 1 and this current is I 1. Then you have an Y B and it is short circuited, Y C is short circuited, so this current must be I 2. All right. The first thing to find out is V 1 by minus I 2 which is obviously that should be y c top. on the top it is Y C correct. <coughs> this is Y C. Okay. So, what is uh, V 1 V 1 by minus I 2 obviously this is equal to 1 over y c. Are the signs all right? V 1 appears across y c and the sign i 2 opposes V 1 and therefore, the negative sign is taken care of and this must therefore, be B. As far as D is concerned, D is i 1 divided by minus i 2. Now, <coughs> minus i 2 is obviously equal to i 1 times yes y c divided by is not that equal to this? Okay. I just skipped one step and therefore, d is equal to i 1 by minus i 2. So, it is y c plus y a divided by y c. All right. I have found out all the parameters. Let me let me write them down a b c d d is equal to y c plus y a divided by y c, <coughs> b is equal to 1 over y c, then uh, c is equal to y a y b plus y b y c plus y c y a <coughs> divided by y c and a is equal to y c plus y b divided by y c. And you can see that A D, oh I am sorry, yeah, A D minus B C is equal to 1? A D minus B C, yeah, it is exactly equal to 1. <coughs> it has to be, there is no other way. Suppose in a problem with a reciprocal network, three of the parameters are given. 
you can find the fourth. Agreed? Because you have this relationship A D minus B C is equal to 1. All right. <coughs> we next go to relationships between the parameters. Interrelationships. The most commonly used parameters are z and y, and therefore, we start with z and y. And we write this matrix, z matrix, as z11, <coughs> z12, z21, and z22, and the y matrix as y 1 1, y 1 2, y 2 1, y 2 2. The defining relations are <coughs> that the voltage vector v 1 v 2, yeah, pardon me, would you please say loud, <laughs> okay, sure, all right. The v matrix which is v 1 v 2, and the I matrix is I 1, I 2. These are vectors. This is a column vector, this is a column vector. <coughs> and if you recall, the defining relation is that V equal to Z I. Okay. The two equations that we wrote can be expressed in this form. V 1 equal to Z 1 1 I 1 plus Z 1 2 I 2 and V 2 equals to Z 2 1 I 1 plus Z 2 2 I 2. The other equation is that I equals to Y matrix multiplied by the V vector. All right. If I substitute equation 2 in equation 1, 2 in 1, okay, what do I get? <coughs> I get V equal to Z instead of I, I write Y V. Okay. This <coughs> is this clear how I wrote this? Would I repeat? Okay. What I have is V equal to Z I. Okay and I is Y matrix multiplied by V. That is what I wrote here. And therefore, this matrix is the same as this matrix. The pre multiplying matrix must be an identity matrix. Therefore, Z Y <coughs> must be the identity matrix U of dimension 2 by 2 this is 2 by 2, this is 2 by 2. So, multiplication of a 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 big gives 2 by 2. What is the definition of the identity matrix? Diagonal, diagonal elements are 1 of diagonals are 0. Okay. And similarly, Y matrix must be the inverse of the Z matrix. This is the interrelationship between Z and Y matrices provided the inverse exists. And the condition for that is that del y, the determinant of the y matrix must not be equal to 0 and the condition for this is that the determinant of the z matrix must not be equal to 0. Okay. And if I look at, if I look at the expanded version of these inverse relationships that is z 1 1, z 1 2, z 2 1, z 2 2 is equal to the inverse of y matrix if i look at this it's a 2 by 2 matrix very simple i can write down the relationships immediately z11 shall be equal to y22 divided by del y z22 shall be equal to y11 divided by del y z12 shall be equal to minus y 2 1 or 1 2? 1 2 there is a transposition 1 2 by del y one must remember this 1 2 
now it is not 2 1. There is a transposition after taking del 1 2 by del there is a transposition and z 2 1 is equal to minus y 2 1 divided by del y. We are lucky that these do not interchange it is easy to remember ok. Alright in a similar manner if you look at the inverse relationship obviously you can write <coughs> y 1 1 as equal to yes z 2 2 by del z y 2 2 is equal to z 1 1 by del z y 1 2 is equal to z 1 2 by del z not quite minus, minus sign and y 2 1 is equal to minus z 2 1 divided by del z where del stands for the determinant of the particular matrix. For example, del y is equal to y 1 1 y 2 2 multi minus y 1 2 y 2 1 ok. Now, what we have said about <coughs> conversion of z to y or y to z the other two matrices that is the h and the a b c d obviously, they do not obey inverse relationship because the variables are different the independent set of parameters is different. So, one has to work out from a b c d from the from no what is it called ab initio ab initio ab initio means going back to the roots. For example, I will take only one example suppose I want to convert the h parameters to the a b c d parameters suppose I want to convert this then what I do is I write both the relationship that is I write v 1 h parameter relates v 1 i 2 to v 1 i 2 to i 1 v 2. So, h 1 1 i 1 plus h 1 2 v 2 and i 2 equal to h 2 1 i 1 <coughs> plus h 2 2 v 2 and I also write the ABCD parameters v 1 i 1 are the dependent variables and this is a v 2 minus b i 2 one must remember this and i 1 equal to c v 2 minus d i 2 all right. So, what we have to do is express v 1 in terms of v 2 and i 2 in other words I have to eliminate i 1 from here. And this is easily found from here i 1 is i 2 minus h 2 2 v 2 divided by h 2 1 which incidentally also gives me c and d. If you compare these two do not you see that i 1 has been expressed in terms of i 2 and v 2. So, what is c? minus h 2 2 divided by h 2 1 and what is d? There is a minus sign because there is a minus sign here all right ok. Now, if I substitute this if I substitute this relation the first one then I get v 1 equals to h 1 1 by h 2 1 i 2 minus h 2 2 v 2 ok. This is the first term h 1 1 i 1 plus h 1 2 v 2 and if I look at this relationship and this one if I compare these two then I get the following equations for a and b. A is the coefficient of v 2 that is that would be h 1 2 minus h 1 1 h 2 2 divided by h 2 1 ok and b b would be equal to minus h 1 1 h 2 2 divided by h 2 1 is it a minus sign you do not have h 2 2 this is a redundant term is there a minus sign there is ok. Now, 
let me write C and D also. C was uh, minus H22 by H21 and D was minus 1 over H21. Okay. It appears that only this term does not come with a minus sign, but if you, if you simplify this, the denominator is minus del H divided by H21. Agree? So, there is a uniformity, all come with a negative sign all of them have a denominator of H21, 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 H21. The three parameters B, C, D have a single term in the numerator H11, H221, whereas A has the total determinant of the H matrix. Okay. In a similar manner, you can go back from A, B, C, D to H or Z parameters to H parameters or Y parameters to A, B, C, D parameters. All of them can be done and this exercise at least for some parameters you should perform. This is the table that we get ultimately. This is a complete table where it does not assume that the network is reciprocal. It is a general table and you should keep a copy of this ready with you in working out problems on problems in network theory because you never know where you shall require a conversion. This incorporates T 2 pi and pi 2 t. T 2 pi means z parameters to y parameters and pi 2 t is y to z parameters. You see for example, the table is read like this. The z matrix and the z matrix, so this is this gives the matrix z matrix. Is this visible on the monitor? Okay. No? What is the problem? Oh, okay. You tell me uh, to shift. Is that okay now? Okay. Z parameters, Z and Z, that is the 1, 1, is simply the matrix. Z, if you go from Z, if you wish to derive Z from Y, okay, the row is all Z parameters and the column is in terms of those parameters. If you want to find z from y parameters, then you use this relation. That is z11 is y22 by del y, z12 is minus y12 by del y as we have done already. Or let us say you want to find out z parameters from ABCD parameters, then z1, z11 is A by C, all right. z12 is del T by C, del T is simply AD minus BC, which is equal to 1 for reciprocal networks. This is a general table and therefore, they have used del T. Similarly, Z21 is 1 by C and Z22 is D by C and similarly for all other entries in the table. This is a <coughs> very important table and very useful table and I would advise that you keep it ready for reference. All right, any question? from the book, yeah. Kuo's book. Any network theory, any respectable network theory book would have this table, okay. Any respectable network theory book. But be aware, um, some of the books, particularly by Indian authors, have many misprints and um, it is better that you take from Kuo's book. All right. <coughs> we then have a brief discussion on applications of the two port parameters, applications of the two port parameters in finding out network functions. Network functions are driving point and transfer, could be impedance, could be admittance or in the case of transfer it could be dimensionless. Now given a network, given a network N and its two port parameters, any transfer function can be found out any transfer function and we shall have a graduated series of examples to illustrate the applications. The first one that I have is suppose I connect a voltage source here V1 and I want to find out the voltage output voltage V2 that is my transfer function is V2 by V1 all right. The parameters you can use any set of parameters. 
but the condition is that I2 equals to 0. If I2 equals to 0, then you know that V1 would be equal to I1 Z11 if I work in terms of the Z parameters and V2 shall be equal to I1 times Z21 that is correct because I2 equal to 0. Therefore, my V2 by V1 is simply Z21 by Z11. Can I explain? You see my condition is this is kept open and therefore I2 is 0. Not implied condition, this is the given condition. <laughs> given condition. If I connect something here then obviously I2 shall not be equal to 0. But what I want is open circuit voltage transfer function. If I2 is 0 then my Z parameters give these two relations and therefore I find V2 by V1. Suppose one is fussy, I do not know the Z parameters, I know the Y parameters and I do not want to convert, fine, fine. What I will do is I will write the equation for I2, I2 is equal to 0 equal to Y21 V1 plus Y22 V2 and therefore V2 by V1 is equal to minus Y21 divided by Y22, all right. Is it okay? I can find out in terms of Z parameters or Y parameter and since I know the relationship between Z and any other set of parameters, what I will require is only to look at the table to be able to convert this for example in terms of ABCD parameter. All that I do is substitute for Z21 in terms of ABCD, substitute for Z11 in terms of ABCD or else I go back to the roots. That is I write the defining equations put I2 equal to 0 and then whatever V2 by V1 comes I accept that. Is this okay? All right. This is the first example, the simplest one. The second example, well it is also very simple. I have the dual situation in which the network N is driven by a current generator I1. The output is short circuited I2 and what I want to find out is I2 by I1. This is my transfer function, okay. If I take the Z parameters, let us say, then in the second equation V2 is equal to 0, is equal to I1 Z21 plus I2 Z22 and therefore I2 by I1 would be equal to minus Z21 divided by Z22, agree? As simple as that from the second equation or if I want in terms of the Y parameters what I will do is I take the two equations I1 shall be V1 Y11 because V2 is 0 and I2 is V1 Y21. All right. Therefore, I2 by I1 is equal to Y21 divided by Y1. No negative sign. Okay. Similarly, I can find out from any other set of parameters. I will confine my attention to Z and Y. Other parameters you can try for yourself. The third example that I take is slightly more involved that is a terminated network. I have a network N. I can connect either source here but all that matters is V1 and I1 and I terminate this by means of a resistance let us say R. The function of interest is I2 by V1, okay. If capital R was replaced by a voltage source V2, then what would have I2 by V1 become? Yeah? Uh, what would you like me to try? Z parameters or Y parameters? Let us find this out, then we will we'll, we'll conclude. Let us use Y parameters. Are they easy? to use? Well, either of them is easy, there is no problem. 
Why do I use uh, y parameters? So, we use the value of i 2 is equal to i 2 minus b 2 by r that is perfectly all right that is what we shall use you see i 2 is y 2 1 v 1 I want i 2 by v 1 <coughs> i 2 is y 2 1 v 1 plus y 2 2 v 2 but what is v 2? So, it is minus y 2 2 r i 2 therefore, i 2 by v 1 is equal to I can write it down y 2 1 divided by 1 plus y 2 2 r. All right. Now, I, wa I want to ask you the following question if capital R is 0 that is if this is short circuit then what is I 2 by V 1? It is simply small y 2 1 that is the definition. Okay. So, a <coughs> now I am introducing a notation you must be careful about this notation when I write a small y it refers to a transfer admittance of the network all right. Now, I 2 by V 1 is also a transfer admittance I 2 is the current in the load and V 1 is the voltage at port 1. So, I 2 by V 1 is also a transfer admittance how do you distinguish between the two you use a capital Y and use the subscripts 2 1 capital Y 2 1 now you must be able to distinguish between capital Y and small y okay. make them quite different do not make them look alike because then you might make a mistake. Why you use this? Okay, you see, if capital R is zero, if this is short circuited, then I two by V one is simply my small y two one, which means the parameter of the network end. It has nothing to do with terminations. Okay, the parameter small y is defined without termination. Now, with termination, I two by V one is still the dimension of an admittance and it is a current at one port to the voltage at the other port. So, it is a transfer admittance all right small y to 1 we call it short circuit transfer admittance that is it it belongs to the network n whereas, under terminated condition to distinguish between small y to 1 the short circuit transfer admittance and the transfer admittance of a terminated network we use the symbol capital Y. The subscripts are still 2 1 2 the first subscript refers to the port at which the response is taken okay, that is at port 2 and the second subscript refers to the port at which the excitation is applied this this will be our convention Y 2 1 shall mean that we are interested in a current at port 2 due to a voltage at port 1. Similarly, if I had written Z 1 2 this will mean that we are interested in a voltage at port 1 due to a current at port 2 is that okay? this will be our convention all right and in the context things will be absolutely clear. Now, suppose Suppose you are fussy and you say no I do not want to work with y parameters I want to work with z parameters but well, all that I have to do is to refer to the table replace y to 1 by by what what is the z parameter plus or minus minus z 1 2 by del z and y 2 2 I shall replace by z 1 1 by del z and work it out or I can go back to the roots okay I can do that let us take the next example before taking the next example let me point out one uh, <coughs> one of the interesting uh, equivalent circuits you see I told you that as far as z parameter is concerned if the network is reciprocal <coughs> and three terminal then you can replace the network by a T network like this where these parameters are Z 1 1 minus Z 1 2 Z 2 2 minus Z 1 2 and Z 1 2 
if the original network is reciprocal but not three terminal then this represents only a mathematical equivalence all right not a physical one on the other hand if the network is reciprocal reciprocity is a must if the network is reciprocal and three terminal this represents the physical equivalent circuit also suppose it is neither suppose the network is not necessarily reciprocal not necessarily reciprocal that means it can be non reciprocal also and it is truly four terminal can you draw an equivalent circuit well this is simplicity itself the drawing of the equivalent circuit if I write I 1 Z 1 1 plus I 2 Z 1 2 and V 2 equal to I 1 Z 2 1 plus I 2 Z 2 2 then it is common sense that this equivalent circuit describes the network that is you have a Z 1 1 a current I 1 V 1. So, V 1 equal to I 1 Z 1 1 plus a quantity I 2 Z 1 2 which is the dimension of voltage. So, I connect a voltage generator here which is I 2 Z 1 2. Obviously, is that okay? It is very simple V 1 equal to I 1 Z 1 1 plus this voltage source. Now, obviously, this is not an independent voltage source, it is a controlled source, it is a dependent source the source depends on the current at port number 2 which is I 2. Okay. This current determines this voltage. So, it is a controlled source and by a similar by a similar argument the equivalent circuit at port number 2 is that we shall have a Z 2 2 here and another voltage source which would be plus minus and the value would be I 1. Z 2 1. Okay. This is the term that we have to use. Z's here are the small Z's. Small Z. Yes, the network parameter, no termination. Now, is this is this clear? This is a truly fourth terminal, truly fourth terminal, and uh, it does not assume either reciprocity or non reciprocity. We have used Z 2 1 and Z 1 2, we have not assumed them to be equal. And therefore, this is a general <coughs> equivalent circuit. What have we achieved through this equivalent circuit? Nothing much. We have simply represented, instead of equations, we have represented this by means of a circuit. The circuit contains two control sources. The two circuits, although shown physically isolated from each other, are not really isolated. Why? Because the coupling coupling comes to the control sources. You see this current controls this. So, the two circuits are not decoupled from each other. Although physically there is no connection, but there is a connection through the control of a voltage source by a current source. Similarly, control of this source by the current source. So, it you have not achieved much, you have simply represented the equations by means of an equivalent circuit. However, sometimes this equivalent circuit is of great help great simplification as we shall show in one or two examples. But by a similar token you can represent the y parameters i 1 equal to v 1 y 1 1 plus v 2 y 1 2 and i 2 equal to v 1 y 2 1 plus v 2 y 2 2. You can represent this by a dual circuit that is what you do is v 1 i 1 I 1 is V 1 times Y 1 1. So, introduce an admittance Y 1 1 here okay, plus another current and this current would be V 2 Y 1 2. It is a current source controlled by the voltage at port 2. Okay. It is a current source controlled by voltage at port 2 V 2. In a similar manner for the other port V 2 and I 2, I 2 is V 2 Y 2 2. So, we have an admittance Y 2 2 here and another current source, controlled current source whose value would be 
V1, Y21. All right. This is an exact dual of the Z parameter equivalent circuit. In the case of Z parameter, there is a series connection of a voltage source and an impedance. Now you have a parallel connection of an admittance and a current source. Okay. As I said, you have not achieved much. You have only represented two equations by means of a circuit. But a circuit, a picture is worth 1000 words as we shall see in in a few examples. Okay. Suppose we have a current source, one example of application of this. Suppose we have a current source, a network N and the termination Z L, the the output voltage is V 2 and what we want is V 2 by I 1. What is it? A transfer impedance okay? and we should represent it by capital Z 2 1 that is correct capital Z 2 1. This is what we want. Now, instead of going into any other any other path if we simply represent if we simply take the Z parameter equivalent circuit. What was the output equivalent circuit? You have a V 2 V 2 you have a series impedance Z 2 2 2 this is the current I 2 and a voltage source what is the value? I 1 Z 2 1 agreed and what you have done here I do not have to draw the other part because I do not need it. What I need is a relation between V 2 and I 1 I 1 is already here. Okay. So, what I have here is a an impedance let us say Z L and what I have to find out is the ratio V 2 by I 1. Obviously, V 2 is equal to I 1 Z 2 1 times Z L divided by Z 2 2 plus Z L is that okay? simply a potential division this is the voltage source and there is a potential division between Z 2 2 and Z L all right? and therefore, in one stroke of the pen we find out the transfer impedance Z 2 1 as V 2 by I 1 as equal to Z 2 1 Z L divided by Z 2 2 distinguish between small and capital. I always cross the middle draw a horizontal line in the middle to indicate small z and do not do it for capitals. Okay. This is how I, I differentiate. Suppose, uh, suppose in this example it is not V 2, but suppose the quantity of interest is I 2 that is the current current through this impedance I 2. Can I find out the transfer function I 2 by I 1? Very simply, I 2 is related to V 2. No, I do not need that. V 2 is equal to, well, I 2 is equal to V 2 divided by Z L with a negative sign. Agreed? So, all that I have to do is, yeah, what did you say? Z1, Z2, one plus Z2, two by Z2. There is a mistake. <laughs> hmm? There is a minus sign. All I have to do is to divide this transfer function by minus 1 by ZL. All right. So, ZL, ZL cancels the negative sign. This you must not forget. All right. The last example we have a voltage source V 1 the network N and an admittance Y L. Our quantity of interest is V 2 and I what we want to find out is V 2 by V 1. Now, in this situation also 
the y parameter equivalent circuit that fourth terminal comes into help. If you recall from the load end from port number 2 what I have is an admittance y22 and a current source how much y21 times v1. So, I do not have to draw the other part at all, all I do is connect a y l here. Okay. So, uh, v 2 is obviously equal to v 2 is the drop due to a current y 2 and v 1 flowing into a parallel combination of y 2 2 and y l. Agree? This is a current source which flows through this parallel combination to produce a drop of v 2. So, v 2 is y 2 1 v 1 current multiplied by minus. impedance yeah there is a minus sign here minus sign because v 2 and y 2 1 v 1 they do not agree. Therefore, minus y 2 1 v 1 divided by y 2 2 plus y l agree. Let me write it down again v 2 by v 1 is equal to minus y 2 1 divided by y 2 2 plus y l and what was the situation n there is a v 1 here and there is a y l here this is v 2. Now, I want you to recall I want you to recall that if y l was equal to 0 if y l was equal to 0 which means that the termination is open circuit then the transfer function open circuit voltage transfer function was precisely this was derived earlier minus y 2 1 by y 2 2 which checks all right it checks. The, the question that I leave you with is there is there a preferred method of solution given a problem is there a preferred method which parameters to use which equivalent circuit to use and so on is there a preferred method my answer is no and yes what does it mean there is a preferred method which comes there is no prescription you can't say if this 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 are to be found out and this this are given you follow z parameter no there is no prescription it comes by experience that is you solve more and more problems and given a problem it will be obvious to you which parameters to use. All right. Next occasion we shall take more examples and then go over to interconnections.